What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of the Kiss Capades podcast and today I have a very interesting well established <laughs> guest. He is uh how he's into I don't even know how. I mean like should you just describe it? I don't want to use words that will not that will not give you enough credit for what you do. I know okay. you're into architecture. Yeah. I mean I, st- I just describe it. Yeah. So let's just say I'm a photographer that used to be an architect but I think I consider myself an artist. Yeah. So generally I'm an artist. Now I'm using photography who knows 5 years from now I really love photography. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to assume that I will be doing photography forever. When you're okay let's just go with this. When you're in school did you know that you're going to be a photographer nope. or this is something that you nope. actually you just stumbled into it? Yeah. What what when was I, like your I was dream? In school, like yeah. I knew that I was going to be an architect. Ah. That's why I was studying architecture uh-huh. because I loved it. Honestly, I loved it. I don't know why I'm not practicing because I don't know how I I didn't fall out of love. But and yeah, if you think about it, a lot of people are thinking like if you quit architecture to start doing photography, first of all, it has to be very lucrative. That is and true. it must. They're thinking maybe. Well, maybe it's an easy way out, is it? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I think it's. I I think it's not. Uh-huh. It was an easier way out for me. Mm-hmm. Or was How, it? Why, why I don't know. Okay. Say that? So the thing I'd say is, uh-huh. for me, when I stopped, when I quit my job in architecture to do photography, it was because. Oh wait, we haven't even said. You know, people oh. will be listening to the audio version. So he's an architect. And okay. Yeah. yeah. Architect. For trained architect. Yeah. Meaning I went to school, I graduated yeah. as an architect, yeah. but then worked for two years as an architect and now quit on my only job. Only two years? Only two years, yeah. Jesus, I stuck in advertising for like five years. What was I thinking? I knew <laughs> quickly what I wanted to do, I think. That was, that. yeah, that helped. Okay, now so I'm a photographer. Now he's a pho- well-established photographer in the country. Yeah. One of the best in Africa, I can say that. I would hope so. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about Mutua Madeka, and he goes by the AKA Truth Slinger, Truth Slinger. On, on Instagram. On the internet, yeah. Do you Instagram, have another Twitter? Have, it's just the same. Do you have other like private accounts? Oh, but those are private accounts. Exactly. Let's stick to Truth <laughs> Slinger. Yeah. So we're talking to Mutua Madeka today. We're just going to dig in into a bit of you know the photography lifestyle taking it as a business, yeah. uh, maybe hardships. Because, you know, like a lot of people, when they see you online, they don't see a lot of your videos. So they're yeah. like, we don't even know if he speaks, if he doesn't speak to people, is he a friendly <laughs> person? Can I ask him actually questions? Yeah. And the funny thing is, like, every time I bumped into you before I knew you, I didn't know if you are the kind of person I can ask for, you know, hey, how did you do this? How oh. did you do this? But after I meet you, after I met you in person and started like talking to you, I was like, "Hey, okay, hey, this is yeah. like a kind of person you can." You're not afraid of me, were you? A friend, afraid? No, 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 not okay, afraid. Not but okay. you know, because we just have so many people who are like, you know how Nairobians are. Yeah, you never know what you're going to y- get. You just never know. Yeah. Somebody might seem friendly, but he's not, because mm. you might go there with good vibes. You're just, you know, innocent, trying to, you know. Like, hey, I like your work, and, and then maybe somebody will be a snob. There are people who are like that. It's, it's possible. And maybe it's just maybe. And I think, especially for artists, not a lot of people are very good in their social skills. That is also true. That's very and true. And sometimes that can be seen as being snobbish. Yeah, but sometimes it's not. It's like just somebody who's like that. With my f- some of my friends, like yeah, yeah. my wife, and yeah. we're out, and someone comes to say hi. Yeah. They always say, oh my goodness, you can't be more friendly. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> I was so friendly. Exactly, exactly. I was so what more do you I'm want? Not, but I'm not a uh, happy, happy, joy, joy all the time. Yeah, yeah. Person, especially to someone I don't know, I'll just be yeah. like, oh yeah, okay, you know my work from the internet, mm. nice, okay. Mm. Thank you very much. And to me, I feel like, wow, I've put myself out there. Yeah. And my wife is like, gosh, someone <laughs> just recognized you, came up to you, and all you have and is like, just oh, like, thank mm, you, thank mm. you. I'm like, <laughs> what did you expect of me? And they say, so mm-hmm. they diss me the most. And they're the people, ah, it's always the ones closest Plus, to I'm you. sure you have to deal with that all the time. And at times, it's not being dismissive. It's just maybe somebody, they're not even sure what kind of reaction you you really want them to put out. 
So as long as somebody has just said hi back. But a- anyway, long story short, like he's actually a very nice person. He can actually friendly. approachable, friendly. Yeah. You can talk to, ask questions about photography. You've always given me like slight pointers in conversations yeah. that I pick up. Because like for me, if I don't, if I know I don't have enough time to speak to someone, I'll just go straight to like, how do you do this? Yeah. How yeah. do you do this? Yeah. I get the answer and then I'm like, okay, so this is not the best environment to, to actually push, have this yeah, conversation. Okay. But now we're doing the podcast where we can talk about all yeah. of this. Okay. <laughs> so how did you stumble into photography? Because you actually studied architecture yeah. and then practice it for two years. Or what made you decide to actually quit and just pursue photography? Knowing that, or yeah. did you know there's a jackpot of money waiting for you? Amma, you're no, just like, this, this is even, not for me. I don't even know this jackpot that you're speaking of. But <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. I will say, honestly, I mean, I feel like I answer this question a lot. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to try not to be too creative with it. Okay. The truth never changes, which is the unfortunate thing, which is so boring. Mm-hmm. But photography just felt more exciting than being employed doing architecture. You see, architecture, mm-hmm. for people who don't know, is, is not a day-to-day exciting. Yeah lifestyle because yeah. you build you design things now that will be built like in a few years so you have to and even designing that one thing you're doing it for probably yeah. months you're designing it for months there's the design yeah. then after the design there's presenting that to the client yeah, yeah we're good we're good oh, okay just go on <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's good. design there's presenting that to the client yeah after that they have to approve they make their changes then you come back you look at the changes yeah you see what works on them then mm-hmm. you go back to the client. Then they, then you come back. I mean, it's it's uh, it's, it's might not re- be as re- exciting, rep- repetitive. Yeah, it's yeah. Not as exciting. Yeah, as photography, I shoot, I see. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, it's doing what I want, or it's not doing what I want. Yeah, then shoot again. Mm-hmm. So for me, I think photography was just more exciting. So, but and yeah, mm-hmm. on top of being more exciting. Yeah, like for me, I was just looking at making just as much money <laughs> no we're good we're good <laughs> i'll just adjust sure? yeah, yeah i'm just okay. monitoring so don't worry about me i'm just making sure okay so yeah uh-huh. so i wasn't i just wanted to make as much money as i'm making being employed That's in it. photography yeah i was like if i could be my own boss yeah make as much money as i make as an employee so in uh-huh. architecture i'll be happy mm. because that money okay, was hold enough. on hold on so let's because for you to take that leap of faith, when you're practicing your other job, that was like a regular eight to five. Yeah. Okay. You're paying bills then. Yes. So how do you leave this job and say, hey, I have the passion for this. Let me just go have fun. And then how do you pay your bills? No, no, I wasn't quitting my job to have the fun. <laughs> it was to, yeah. I figured, Cause I can you have know, that's fun in something I enjoy, uh-huh. but at the same time, Make I was like, how I'd already, because for two years when I was uh-huh. employed, yeah. I was doing a lot of photography work. Ah, I didn't just uh-huh. quit to start uh-huh. shooting. Uh-huh. I picked up a camera and got employed same time, 2010. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, I you was in the office. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. As I'm working in the office, I'm also shooting every day. Uh-huh. And sometimes I'd, I'd shoot portraits for 5K. Mm-hmm. Stuff. So I didn't think that I could make more than 5K a shoot. But okay. I said, okay, mm. for me, I was earning 70K at the office a month. I was thinking, yeah, 70 divided by 5, I don't know how much that is. But if I do this... Uh, but if that's th- how many uh, shoots I need to do in a month. Seven shoots. To seven make. shoots. Is oh, it seven? No, oh, no, no 14. 14, sorry. It's 14. 14 and shoots. And I was like, 14 shoots? That's like working... If yeah. I'm working on those 14 shoots, that's not like working half a month. Yeah, yeah. But like this makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I don't see how hard this could be. Mm-hmm. And then I quit, just like that. So I was like, "Yeah, I, c- I can." But I that's can a leap of faith because it it's not a, a guarantee. It's not a guarantee. But then also remember, for me, uh, I've always I feel like I've always been a guy who kind of hustles mm-hmm. on the side since I was in standard date. When I cleared standard date, my yeah. exam. I was working at my uncle's shop mm-hmm. to make some money. So I've always been doing something on the side. But that at least thing. brings money yes. and then you're not just scared of changing something because yeah, yeah. you're so not just dependent on one Precisely. Thing. I've okay. never been too afraid that mm-hmm. I wouldn't make money. Mm-hmm. Somehow, 
I always like my mom it always worked yeah, out because my mom my dad never used to give me too much pocket money anyway like my own spending money mm-hmm. and my mom was always like a proper african mom very frugal mm. so like giving you money to buy things why mm. if you want to do if you want to buy yourself things i think all work. old school moms yeah. just they <laughs> built that like whole hustle mentality yes. in all of and all sometimes of us. they build it without even knowing because yeah. like my mom when she bought us clothes Yeah. She would buy those boring silk shirts. And I was like, mm. I mean, from one, what am I doing wearing silk shirts? So I was like, I need to get my own money uh-huh. so that I can so buy, I what buy what the I shirts like. that I want. Because my mom is not going to buy me like She's giving you basic jeans yeah. for a G, which is what it doesn't like, make fubu, fubu yeah, jeans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. Kalkana, that's what mm, it cost. Mm-hmm. So I remember thinking. Sean John at the time. I was like, I, the no, likes. No, no. I have to buy myself my own clothes. Mm-hmm. And that's why in fact I started working for myself to buy my own clothes that's it. But uh, then I've always every holiday you've always I've always worked. And then interestingly I just discovered this mm-hmm. last year that all my side hustles somehow yeah. were also artistic. Yeah. Thankfully because my mom discovered my art way before I knew and I remember because my mom was a teacher she would get me to it was nepotism but hey, she would get me to do <laughs> like in the school we talked we talked about <laughs> that on the previous <laughs> podcast so hey yeah. so, so uh-huh. But I worked for my money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <coughs> like she will be in the schools and she says, look, for drama festivals, music festivals, you know, most schools had backdrops. Mm. And for the schools that she will be teaching, she will get me to paint the backdrops. Oh, and then make a, a little bit of yeah. money. So I'd make money from painting. I sold some of my little paintings to some mm. of, you know, stuff like that. So I knew from a young age that art makes money.